my name is Nuala McKeever. I'm a writer, broadcaster, playwright, actor, performer, stand-up comedian, and sometimes newspaper columnist, sometimes radio presenter. Uh, my association with Terra Nova goes back way to the beginning. I was friends with Andrea. I was introduced to her and she directed my first ever play, One Woman Show. And then we became friends and we worked together on other projects. And then she set up Terra Nova and I've been involved in four projects that she's done for plays. Um, the first one was called It's Not All Rain and Potatoes. More of that later. Then we did the Ulster Kama Sutra. And then we did uh, Mimundo, <laughs> sorry, my memory's gone. I was in Mimundo, one of the Arrivals project, I had a small part in that. And then the last thing I was in was her production of The Tempest in Belfast. I have lots of small memories, you know, little moments of things, moments in close-ups is how we remember things, I think. But of all the productions, all great memories, great fun. The first thing I did was It's Not All Rain and Potatoes, which was a sketch show with sketches and comedy songs written by Andrea and her husband Anthony Toner who's a singer-songwriter and me. Uh, oh that was great fun and I was in it with two other guys I performed with Fuelan and Stephen. can't remember Stephen's second name, sorry Stephen. Uh, Fuelan Morgan and Andrea directed and it was the idea which I can see the progress of the procession then that went through Terra Nova, you know, Andrea obviously has always had this multicultural interest because of her multicultural background. But we were taking a look at the whole notion of what is it to be Irish? Somebody like, I always thought it was Socrates, but I think it was Groucho Marx said, there's two certainties in life, death and taxes. And then an Irish writer, Flann O'Brien said, the two certainties in Irish life are rain and potatoes. So we were trying to sort of explode that myth. And so that's why it was called, it's not all rain and potatoes. So we took lots of cliches. Um, like there was a book out at the time called The God Delusion by your man Stephen or Docking, the atheist. So I wrote a sketch called The Crack Delusion, which was kind of taking the mickey out of the notions of that the Irish were either all the Celtic Tiger, all drinking in the bars in Dublin, and when you actually honed in, they were all going, Yes, I got a 5.6 APR variable on the such as you know, they were all real boring gits, or it was the old guys in the pub, you know nothing happens, sipping their Guinness, one of the guys falls off the stool and the other two go <gasps> and just carry on, stuff like that. We had a, a really funny sketch called the Rosary Races, two people high fast could they say the Rosary. <laughs> and Anthony wrote a brilliant sketch about the Nativity but written by Irish writers and like Seamus Heaney and stuff. So it was, it was sort of taking the tropes and the motifs of Irishness a lot of the time and twisting it and it was great and I don't think anybody really had done anything like that you know we'd lots of satire about our local politics but we hadn't done anything really taking on the big and the literary and the cultural not the political so that was brilliant and um, I suppose some of that then you can see the thread of that idea of what is identity who gets to tell the story of identity it's something that's fascinating me as well at the moment uh, so then Andrea obviously wanted to branch out and give a platform for other voices from here, not the traditional white, Irish, Protestant, Catholic, British, whatever you want to call yourself. And I was really pleased to be involved in Me Mundo. I think it was the second time it was performed. And again, that was done as a promenade performance. It was the story of a couple who moved back to Northern Ireland and he was from South America and he couldn't get a visa or he was having problems getting a visa. And it was shining a spotlight on stuff that goes on that as everybody in the audience said, wow, I never thought of that. You know, they have a baby and they still, you know, it was the humanity, which is what life is. Life is not, the government is not a thing. Society is not a thing. It's all us individual people with stories and feelings. And the beauty of what Andrea and Terramova does is make those big issues so personal and universal at the same time and people get it in their gut like when you're right up this close to a couple and they're crying you cannot I mean only a hard-hearted person even the, the school kids who came to see it at the beginning they're teenagers they're a bit tittery about anything to do with love or kissing but then that quality of silence kicks in when they start to hear and see something that's really gets them in the feels you know and it does it I mean thinking about it, it it's Live performance when it's good like that is just, you're never going to get that really watching. You might get it on film or TV, I don't know, but there's something, you can't look away. 
you can't switch it off when you're there. So I think Andrea's work has been amazing at bringing stories into this part of the world. And, you know, she's not pushing at an open door because a lot of the time people think, well, that's them, not us. But the reality is we are all us now, you know. So, and she's also managed to put a lot of humour in The Tempest. I played a part that was a man originally, lots of parts were given then, she wrote them for women. And I mean, it's a pretty hefty play, it's pretty serious, but uh, my partner, I can't even remember the name of the character, was uh, comedic, so, you know, there was always room for a bit of light. And again, it's that idea that things are universal, humour can be universal. You can do it in your accent, but it's still the same Shakespearean language and it's funny. So to make Shakespeare funny, that's good. Well, Terra Nova's work is really valuable here. And I think Andrea was probably before her time in some ways because the zeitgeist maybe wasn't quite ready. I mean, everything is talk is about diversity now, but like so many things, there's a lot of lip service paid in the mainstream to the notion of diversity. And Andrea herself has realized that as a white woman, although she is an immigrant to this country from Canada and everywhere else that she's from, she's not seen as an immigrant because she's a white woman. Uh, you know, but the story of people who come from somewhere else to live here, uh, has been, it's confronting because I think particularly in Northern Ireland, we are a people coming out of trauma, which hasn't even really been really acknowledged. I mean, we've, again, we pay lip service to the word trauma, but I think we're not treating people with, from a point of view of trauma of, you know, just the awful things that have happened, the intergenerational awful things. And then when you bring into that mix people who come from other stories, I think sometimes there can be a defensiveness hear about, well, go away, we have our own stuff to think about. But my whole drive in life is to say, it's never an either or. Look how much we can learn from people who, and it's not a, a trauma competition, but, and it's not all about trauma, obviously. People coming here, it's not all about sadness or fleeing war or refugees. A lot of the time it's people simply the same way as people from here want to go and live somewhere else. God knows why anybody wants to come and live in Northern Ireland with this weather, but they do. And it's that John Hume, the politician, used to say, we go abroad on holiday and we embrace things that are different. And yet when something's different here, we see it as a threat. And it's not to say I don't recognise there are problems sometimes with how communities get integrated when there's an influx of new people. I think it has to be managed in a way that people don't just feel the fear because I think that's what happens. A lot of people who have lived here all their lives in communities see people coming in with different look and different lifestyle. And the thing that drives the racism deep down, I think is fear. Something's gonna be taken away from me. So how do we make that conversation to say, actually, what if you're not gonna lose something? What if you're actually gonna get something from this? But our society doesn't tend to talk in those ways and people haven't been brought up that way. We are as human animals fearful and fear and vigilance and all is kind of our, 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 our meat and drink, if you, if you would like to say it that way. So I think these conversations that have been started are A, vital, and the next thing will be when the people writing them will be the people who live here, who have come from somewhere else. And it's that whole idea of saying other is not necessarily, or different and other is not a bad word. And it's not something, because ultimately we're all the same stuff no matter who we are or where we come from. And it's that, again, it's telling the positive story. Our news is filled with the negatives about everything and to see positive representation of people. And you know, when you see people in the audience going, oh my God, that's just like me. And you go, uh-huh, uh-huh, isn't it just, you know? Whatever the so-called difference is. I mean, who's the normal? That's what I want to know. There must be about three people in the world who are the normal standard, you know, because women are separate, you know, basically the white, the white middle class Western male. And yet in the population as a whole, that person's a very small minority. It's and it's a bit like the way empire is being reassessed and lots of historical conversations have been reframed now by people who've been educated and found a voice and got a voice or been allowed to express their voice. And I think it's brilliant, brilliant. A whole new Northern Ireland is available to us. Watch this space.
three words. Uh, give me work. <laughs> More of this. More of this. Go. 